This is the most advanced way of selling on Amazon. It takes the most money. It takes the most work. It takes the most risk. Of course, there's a big payoff in the end. While it is the safest business model, I would say, I'm sure you can start with less money, but the problem is, Hey, what's going on everybody today? I wanted to explain the different business models of selling on Amazon. And specifically in this video, I wanted to explain the difference between retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and wholesale. And I'll, I'll throw in private label at the end, but I would say for most folks who are looking to get started, maybe you've been hearing about selling on Amazon and you're thinking like, what should I start with? What business model should I start with? Which one's best for beginners? Which one requires like a lot of money or a little bit of money? In this video, I'm essentially going to help you to figure out like what business model that you should choose. You know, I've been doing this for over 10 years. I've done retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale. I don't have a ton of experience in, but I have a quite a few friends who do it. So I'll explain, you know, to the best of my knowledge, let's get right into things. Okay. So number one is retail arbitrage. So if you're a beginner, if you're brand new to selling on Amazon, I highly recommend doing the retail arbitrage model on Amazon. So essentially that includes sourcing inventory from like thrift stores, like Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers, uh, maybe going to garage sales on the weekends, auctions, flea markets. Retail arbitrage does include sourcing from like the clearance section at Walmart, Target, Barnes and Noble, uh, locations like that. I would say retail arbitrage is the best for beginners because it's the least amount of risk. You can get started for literally a couple hundred dollars or less. I mean, you could literally go to Goodwill with 10 bucks in your pocket. Of course, there are expenses involved, like a $40 monthly plan with Amazon. And then you need a printer and labels and boxes and there's selling fees. And, you know, there's, there's much more that goes into it. But in terms of the actual business model, I recommend starting with retail arbitrage. It's the lowest risk, couple hundred bucks. And you could start by sourcing items like books and CDs and DVDs and items like that. So Retail arbitrage, going to retail stores, thrift stores, it's lowest risk, start for you know a couple hundred bucks or less. And a resource I'd like to extend out to you is my free five-day book selling workshop. So you can check that out at rakeandprofit.com slash workshop. This is two hours of free content that will walk you through the entire process of getting started on a shoestring budget. So you can figure out you know how to sell, how to get through the basics. And then after a couple months, three to six months, then I would recommend moving on to the other models that I'm going to talk about. So that's retail arbitrage. Next on deck is online arbitrage. So it's very similar to retail arbitrage, but the only difference is it's online. So with online arbitrage, you're sourcing from online websites. Any retail website typically has an online website. And the reason people do this is because you can really leverage your time. You could buy items, you know, on walmart.com, Target, you know, all different types of websites. And you could have them shipped to your house without even having to go to the store. Or you can have it shipped to a prep center and they'll prep all your items and then they'll ship it to FBA and then FBA will do everything. So a lot of people who are looking into online arbitrage, they don't want to have to go out to stores. They don't want to have to go out to Goodwill. They don't want to have to touch the products and deal with all the ins and outs. Now, the downside to this is you typically need more money. I'd highly recommend starting with a couple thousand dollars at least. Now, I'm sure you can start with less money, but the problem is you know, items cost a lot more money. You're not going to go to the thrift. Like when you go to the thrift store, you buy an item for five bucks and flip it for 50. You're not going to do that with online arbitrage. Your margins are going to drop from, you know, 50 to hundred percent down to 20, 25, 30%. So even if you're doing eBay to Amazon flips or Amazon to Amazon flips, which is what I do, eBay to Amazon, your margins aren't going to be anywhere near thrifting. So you need more money. You need more capital. Typically, you need more experience as well. You have to be really good at reading keep charts, managing your money, managing your numbers, because there is going to be less margin there. And uh, with less margin, there's less error available for you to make mistakes. So I would say it's a mid-range risk. There's more money involved. There's obviously the you know, the higher chance of you getting in trouble and losing your money. But essentially, that's online arbitrage. Now, wholesale is quite a bit different from retail arbitrage and online arbitrage because with retail arbitrage, you're going out to re retail locations and you're sourcing. Online arbitrage, it's the same thing, but you're sourcing from online locations. With wholesale, you're buying from either two places. Number one is a distributor. So there's distributors out there who distribute products and you can build relationships with these distributors and acquire products that way. Or number two, 
you're getting wholesale products directly from the brand or the manufacturer through building relationships, contacting the brands and getting exclusive deals or becoming a authorized wholesaler. Now, the thing with wholesale is, you know, you could start theoretically with a couple thousand bucks. A few of my friends told me as I was researching this video, but on average, you need five to $10,000 to really get things going. You're going to have to spend a lot more money. There's MOQs, minimum order quantities. There's obviously the time that it takes for all those products to get checked in. You're holding on to more inventory. So while it is the safest business model, I would say, and online arbitrage is pretty safe as well outside of eBay to Amazon and A to A, wholesale is really safe because you have legitimate invoices, right? You have invoices from the distributor or manufacturer. So if you ever get a counterfeit or an IP complaint, you've got those invoices to save your butt. Now, I would say it's more of a, a mid to a high risk because there's a lot more money that you have to invest. Your margins are going to be much less. You may need your own warehouse, physical employees. You know, again, this is probably one of the safest models, but again, you have to spend a lot more money. And I wouldn't recommend jumping from, you know, just being a beginner right to wholesale unless you have previous business experience. In my opinion, right? And I'm just a guy on the internet, so do what you got to do. But I recommend starting with thrifting and retail arbitrage. Do that for three to six months. Learn the basics. Do this business with the least amount of risk, the least amount of money. Learn it. Then move on to online arbitrage. You can really start turning this more into a, a real business where you're not the only cog in the system, right? You have VAs, maybe you have a prep center, you know, you have someone who's getting coupons for you and different things like that, right? Um, again, I do eBay to Amazon, so I'm not like the traditional online arbitrage guru, but uh, maybe move on to that and then maybe do that for six to 12 to 18 months. And then maybe you start to hit some, some snags in the system and you're like, Hey, I want to, you know, I want to get closer to the actual source. I want to, I want to source more products. I don't want to have to always be going after the next sale or the next coupon or sourcing the next item from Flipmine. You want to, you know, you're like, you're willing to sacrifice the margin a little bit just to have those direct relationships, have more products, scale, then maybe you're ready for wholesale. You have some more money. So those are the differences between retail arbitrage, online arbitrage and wholesale. And I said at the end, I was going to mention private label. So private label is essentially you creating your own product from scratch. You, you may, you know, take a generic product and put your own, you know, brand on it. That's called white labeling, or maybe you create your own invention and you create your own product and your own brand and your own packaging. And, you know, you have to do everything. You have to create your own barcode. This is the most advanced way of selling on Amazon. It takes the most money. It takes the most work. It takes the most risk. Of course, there's a big payoff in the end if you do it well because you can sell your company. It's a lot harder to sell like your wholesale business unless you have, you know, maybe relationships or distributors that you can sell the list to or something along those lines. With RA and OA, retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, it's it's really challenging to sell that business. I haven't really heard of anybody selling a retail arbitrage or an online arbitrage business. But again, private label, you have to do everything, all the marketing, all the branding. Nobody knows about you. I mean, at least with wholesale and online arbitrage and RA, you're selling products that are already popular. But with private label, it's the most risk. So I don't recommend this unless you really know what you're doing and you understand Amazon, you understand all the fees and the costs of having to run PPC and all that. Again, I'm not an expert with all of that, but essentially private label is like white labeling, creating your own product from scratch. So hopefully this video helped. And now you understand the difference between retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale and private label. And hopefully this will help you to make a decision in terms of how you want to start, scale or advance your Amazon business. So with that being said, Appreciate you guys. Check out the links down below if you want any help learning and growing and scaling your business. I have a lot of resources down there. And with that being said, much love. See you in the next one.